This concept of the body living in two modes, you know? I mean, first off, you know, people don't, um, what, what program is built for somebody, but it's built in a way where, you know, it's, it's a bunch of shit people don't want to do. So I love cardio. I say, oh, do you? Have you done it every day for the last 10 years? Oh, no, I, I take a break. Well, you don't take a break from something you love, dipshit. <clears throat> so when I build a program for someone with their own personal human, human instinct involved, then it's like if you love to go to the movies on Thursday night, you're going to fucking go to the movies Thursday night, period. So, end of story. You don't want to go anymore? At some point, you say, fuck it, I'm not doing it. Well, that's what happens with people's programs. So <clears throat> that's the first element. The second element is that the body lives in two modes. And this is where it gets pretty crazy, brothers. It's like the, this, this, I'm getting so good at this process now for myself and actually teaching others. It's like, it's so much more than just changing someone's physique because the rest of their bodies, you know, I'm not sitting here trying to sell life. But when the rest of their lives start to get easier, nobody's fucking complaining. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so basically, totally. So you got basically two different modes that the body lives in. Okay? <clears throat> there's survive and there's thrive. 99% of people live in the mode of survive, which is ultimately a mode of conservation. The body... <clears throat> Excuse me, my neck a little stiff there. So the body basically is in this conservation mode. So every time someone eats, a chunk of that's going to get slapped around their ass and their belly. The other chunk's going to get burnt real slow, hence the term conservation. Now, you can fucking spot these people a mile away. They're all over the place. They're overweight, or if they're in good shape, they have pockets of body fat that they can't get rid of because of their poor genetics, which is horse shit. <clears throat> um, they're always fucking having trouble getting up in the morning, hitting the snooze, looking for fucking energy drinks in the afternoon. Uh, a lot of times they're not even fucking very optimistic. You know, they see the bad before they see the good because you hear again, they're, they're, they, they don't realize their, their whole existence is in a mode of survival. So here's the thing. <clears throat> Trying to get in shape is like, taking a fucking, trying to get in shape in the mode of survive, in survival mode, or in conservation, is like taking a heavy, heavy fucking wheelbarrow and trying to push that motherfucker uphill, which you'll get to go, but as soon as you stop fucking pushing so hard, that motherfucker is going right back where it started, whether you like it or not. And it fucking breaks people's will. It's fucking debilitating. And after so many goes, People get that fucking wheel pushes them to the bottom of the hill. They're like, F I fuck this shit. I don't care. I'll be a fat fucker for the rest of my life. I'm not doing that again. Well, it's because the process that they're in, they don't really enjoy. And B, they're really in a battle never, they'll never win because <clears throat> it's such a steep hill and a heavy wheelbarrow is too heavy. That's basically someone trying to get in shape in the mode of survival. So most of these people that are doing shows... They have coaches that don't really understand this. So they start off in survival mode, conservation mode. Their bodies are already conserving. Then their fucking coaches crush them with more fucking exercise and less food, which puts the body deeper into the mode of survival. Okay, so I was already fucked up in the mode of survival. I was conserving like a motherfucker. Now I got to do twice the exercise and you took fucking 25% of my food away. Fuck me, I better go deeper into this mode real fucking quick. Now that wheelbarrow got heavier, now you got fucking less energy to push it up the fucking hill. And it's it's a fucking vigorous circle. You can't, it's a spin side you can't get out of. Now, once you take <clears throat> the body to thrive, the other side of the fence, you don't see these people a lot. They're fucking full of energy, they're optimistic, they have they never carry body fat. Um Usually, you're quite surprised how old they are. Something I'm describing myself, yes, because I'm 47 years old. You know, anyway, but, but the point is, is that my body is operating at the highest level because I know how to take care of it. I know how to give it what it wants. It's almost like if you've got a wife or a fiance or, you know, a, a you know, long-term lady, if you give her what she wants before she has to ask, oh, She's going to make your life fucking great. 
If she's got to fucking scream at you every time she wants something, you got a fucked up life. Well, that's the difference between the body happy and the body pissed off in fucking, in uh, the mode of conservation. So basically, when you get the body into the mode of thriving, everything changes. Fucking energy goes up. Your focus is better. You sleep fucking better. The body's like, I don't have to conserve every time something gets fed to it. It just fucking burns it up. It doesn't conserve it. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I got everything I need. What the fuck am I carrying around this 30 pounds of fucking fat for? Let's get rid of this right quick. Bam, off comes the fat. Body doesn't want to hold fat, doesn't want to make fat. It's not conserving anymore. <clears throat> it's thriving. Now, here's a fucking killer part about this. Once you get someone to thrive, much like a person who was born into poverty, right? Most people are born into fucking survival when they don't know it. I was. Fuck, my mom loved me, but she tried to feed me clean, but clean did not have anything to do with the micronutrients. The body wants micro, not macro. So anyway, once you basically, a person's born into poverty, he's been there for fucking 25 years, no fucking bed to sleep in, He's fucking dirty all the time. He's got a fucked up life. As far as he knows, that's the way it is. Doesn't know any different. He's heard and seen of it in magazines, but never thought he would experience it. And one day, fucking somehow life changes. Bam. He's in a good life. He's got a house. He's got a job. He's got money. He's got a fucking vehicle. Okay, about a week into this, he's like, holy shit, this is not a dream. This is not a weekend. About three, four weeks in, he takes ownership. He doesn't want to go back. He, he loves his new life. This motherfucker and the body will literally cut fucking fingers and limbs off before they go back to poverty or survival mode. The, body, the person doesn't want to go back to poverty, a body doesn't want to go back to being fucking scared to death for its existence. So once I get someone deep into thriving, brothers, let me tell you, you have to fucking try, I mean seriously try to fuck this up. This is not, oh my God, I got, a, I got a weekend vacation. Most people take a weekend vacation when they're in survival mode. You know, that fucking four weeks, four, excuse me, four or five days long weekend. You know, they come back, they're fucking out of shape. They're fucking beat up. They're just because the, the, the gains that they made to go on that trip, that wheelbarrow fucking slid back to where it started in five fucking days. And, yep. And with thriving... The body, much like that fucking guy, he will squat in that fucking house before he chooses to go back to poverty. The body's gonna do the same thing. The body will squat in the mode of thriving before it, it's not gonna choose to go back. You're gonna have to really fuck it up. Now, this is all fucking great, and people hear me talk about this shit, but here's the thing. People don't understand, I mean, this is all great in theory, but how the fuck do you get somebody from survive to thrive? Well, this is really where the biggest hiccup comes because our industry and people out there think that a custom diet is some fucking guy creating up, you know, playing off the fucking numbers and all the fucking basic bullshit. When people are talking to me numbers, first thing I know in my mind is they don't know fucking shit because numbers is the way to talk when you don't know the real language, you know? <clears throat> so... Basically, in terms of creating a plan for somebody, right? What the, what the public is used to is, yeah, here's a plan based off numbers, do this two weeks, send me a picture, at the end of the two weeks, I'll send you a new plan. That is fucking boilerplate horseshit. Unfortunately, the public doesn't know it. A real custom plant is this, and this is how I do it, and when I explain this to people, they're like, holy shit, I've never even heard of this before. Well, it's because we're trying to achieve something that you've never tried to achieve before. When I get someone in shape, the getting in shape is literally nothing more than a positive side effect of me getting them into the mode of thriving. Once they're thriving, they're gonna get in fucking great shape. At that point, whatever their goals are, a piece of cake. <clears throat> you know, they're gonna dump off body fat. What else do they wanna achieve? I just gotta tweak the diet for what they want because the body will do exactly what the fuck we want it to at that point. It's not fucking stubborn. It's not fighting us anymore. So, custom diet to make this program works is like this. First off, I don't fucking coach on the goddamn on email. There's no way I could convey this type of information in detail to somebody.
that's literally specific to them. Because when I, met, when I coach on the telephone, I give someone a plan. It's, okay, here's your plan. And I'm on the telephone with them. This is not email. This is what you're going to do on day one of your diet. At the end of day one, you're going to see very clearly one of two things. I don't care which one it is. You text me, let me know. Bam, I'm going to adjust at the end of day one. When I give them the adjustment, here's the adjustment. Now you're watching for this. As soon as you see this, let me know. Bam, I'm going to adjust. So in that first week, I will adjust a lot of times, three to five times in the first week because every time the body gives me a signal, I've got to respond and give it back what it wants. That gets this holy shit. Every time I ask, I receive. Next thing you fucking know, the body's like, whoa, I guess I don't have to worry about conserving anymore. And all this fucking next thing, it's about seven days in, sometimes nine, people start to feel this weird acceleration. And what I mean by that is shit happening they've never really felt happen before. You know, they, they got more energy. They're eating all the time. Never, ever be hungry. Number one draw of fucking jam down someone's throat. You can't, being hungry tells the body it's time to conserve. Okay? Now, I can't, I can't get someone in this shape eating pizza. My apologies. but <laughs> So, when I adjust like that, when I adjust like that, it basically gets the body on cue that it's going to get what it wants. Once I get it into the mode of thriving, fuck, everything changes. And that's where, you know, people lately especially have seen some of the, because I've been, I've been actually taking a lot more of my clients' feedback and, and posting it so people can see it doesn't have to be so fucking difficult to reach your goals. Everybody has these preconceived ideas. And it's like even about doing a show. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not easy. But it doesn't have to be this fucking destroy your life. The wife left home. Your fucking kids won't talk to you. You lost your fucking job scenario like most people go through. Most people do a show. They got to spend two months fucking cleaning up their life. You know? Yeah, it's, a, it's a drastic lifestyle Yes. As to where with what I'm talking about, your body doesn't carry much body fat. So it's to, to actually get it to do what we want. Of course, it's a challenge, but it's not this. Like you said, it's not these two completely different things. I'm going to teach a lifestyle. Someone feels good. They're happy. They're loving what they're doing. And they're staying in great shape. It's not difficult to go to a show from that condition. And it's not a condition that you live just for the summer. It's a way of, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of eating. It's a lifestyle. <clears throat> Diet, you go back in the beginning, has that word does not mean anything to do with food has to do with lifestyle. So when I teach someone a lifestyle to keep, to get them into the mode of thriving, fellas, I'm telling you, this, this literally, of all the things that I feel that I have done in my career, whether it be athletically, coaching people, whatever, business, I feel like this whole system that I am basically unhatched and bringing to the people very, very smoothly and simply now, has been probably the most powerful thing. People on this system, it changes their life, period. It's not just, and, and it's, I kind of turn myself in, it's like, a, it's not, it's kind of a joke, but not really, because I tell people, look, a good coach changes a life, not just a physique. And when you help someone rebuild the way they think, the way they go about life, and it changes their life, that's the fucking shit right there. So anyway, I've been fucking just jacked up. I'm two weeks away from a competition. Do I look like I'm fucking two weeks away from a co I mean, I look I look like this, but I'm saying, do I'm not all fucked up. I'm not sitting here, you know, tweaking out. It's because I'm not in fucking living in survival mode, you know? Yes. One hundred percent. The difference between someone's mindset in thriving or surviving is fucking stark. That person that's in survival mode, he always sees the glass is half empty. The person that's thriving is like, fuck. That's fuck. That motherfucker's half full. Yeah, this this is good day, you know. And it, and you're totally correct. You know, unfortunately, so many people get left with 
you know, trying to learn how to make a better way for themselves with a bunch of copied and pasted and email bullshit. And it's just not that, it's, it's not that easy, you know? That's a great question, brother. And what the thing comes down to is I, I always make the joke about a month, maybe six weeks in when people are like, I mean, they're like, my honeydew list is already done for the year. Normally it's not done until July. Right. And when I hear start shit, when I start to hear stuff like this, like, God, you know, my kids are eating better now too. I said, look, I wasn't trying to sell you life, but life gets this, this changes your life. You came to me to change your to change your your look and how you feel. The the positive side effects are like I said. I'm changing your lifestyle, changing your mode. The positive side effect is getting in shape. The most important shit is actually changing the mode, which that's what changes your life and all the shit around you. You know, your family will start eating better. Um, you know, you're you just everything. When you're more optimistic and when you get shit more done and and you take care of the people around you, it makes a better environment for all. It's I it's I do brother I say it's like a higher level of consciousness it really is because you think back to what you used to feel like what you used to do how about you used to do things like what the fuck was I doing 